In this video, we are going to demonstrate how one would use the OCALC LE application when it is opened on a tablet, a laptop, or when it is being used on a mobile device. The first step in getting to the OCALC LE application is going to be to open a web browser and navigate to www.ocalcpro.com LE where you will see this start page. Once you select the start button, the next screen that you are going to see will ask for your username and password. This username and password should have been established by your project manager. Provided you have both of these items, you can then select the login key. Once you log in, you should see a list of projects that you have been assigned to. If you do not see a list of projects, check with your project manager that you have been assigned to the appropriate project. Once you see the project that you would like to start collecting on, you can select that project from the list and select Begin Collection. After you hit Begin Collection, you will see this screen which asks you for a couple pieces of information about the poll you are collecting. First, you can enter a structure ID, and then you have the option to add additional notes besides the date which is populated for you. You'll also see that you can enter a latitude and longitude, which you can do by selecting Get Location, and then selecting Next. On this next screen, you'll be able to input additional information about the poll you are collecting. First, you'll see your available load cases that you can choose from. Then you can put in information regarding the length and class of the poll, as well as the species. Down at the bottom, you'll see that a default size at the ground line and a default length above ground line have been put in for you. You do have the option, if you have measured the circumference at the ground line, to put that in here by selecting this box and typing in a different value. You can also change the collection method for that measurement. Once this information looks correct, you can click the Next button where you will then have the option to upload an image or to take an image of the poll you are collecting. For the purposes of this video, I'm just going to upload a photo that I've already taken. And I can see that my image has been added, so I can click Next. On this next screen, you're going to see a couple different items, some of which should be familiar. For example, down at the bottom, you can see this overhead view or compass, which is very similar to the top view that you will see in the OCALC Pro desktop application. What you'll also see is the option to add a bay or to add a pre-built set. Pre-built sets also refer to bays, which in OCALC LE are the directions at which you'll be able to add spans. For example, if I select a pre-built set, I can select adding tangent, dead end, or crossing bays and a default span length for those bays. So for this example, I might want to select to do 100 foot tangent bays. And I'll see that once I've selected those options, I have a bay in the front going off for 100 feet and a bay in the back also going off for 100 feet. And I can see my zero degree and 180 degree rotations listed here as well. I can also add a bay manually by going under the Add Bay option, naming that bay, putting in a distance value, and also putting in an angle. In this case, I might want to put in something like 90 degrees. Now once I select OK, I'll see that that is also added to my list. You ideally want to add a bay for whatever direction a span is going off at. Once you've added all the appropriate bays, you can select the next option. What you can also do under this drop-down menu is change your line of lead, clear all of the bays, and also delete a bay. I'm going to keep all of the bays that I've added, so I'm going to click Next. This next screen is where we're going to add different components to the poll that we are collecting. You can see across the top different drop-down lists for different components that we can add to our poll. To begin with, we can add spans to our poll. By clicking on this span list, we can see that we have the option to either add a span or a drop. So we can begin by adding a span, and then we can select either primary, secondary, or communication spans. 
To begin with, I'm going to select Primary Spans, and I can select one of the different sizes that I have populated from my configuration file. For more information on setting up your configuration file, please see the OCalc LE configuration video also listed on our YouTube channel. I can select a medium size primary span where I can see it will be added to my list. Once a component has been added to the list, we can then begin to change different attributes about that item. For example, I have the option to select my span owner from an available list that I've established. I also have the option to choose the insulator type or the way in which that span is attached to the pole. For this example, I might want to select a post instead of a pin. I can also change the count or the number of primaries, which I might change to three. Then I also have this option here, which allows me to choose whether or not that post is on the pole, on a cross arm, or some other type of attachment. I might want to select a single cross arm for this example. I also have the option to change the attachment height here, which can done, be done either from the tip down or from the ground line up, so I'm going to leave it as is, so this way I know that this primary is attached one foot below the tip of the pole. Once I've customized these different attributes, I can select the bays that this set of primaries is going to exist in by selecting Pick Bays. From here, I can select my back and my front bays, which will be highlighted in green, and then select Add Bays. And I'll see that my little top view icon updates to show that I have spans going off at 0 and 180 degrees, which is also reflected down here. Once I'm finished customizing this item, I can minimize it using this arrow and add the next component to my list. Some other spans that I might want to add to this poll could be secondary, which I can do in a similar way by selecting span, secondary, and selecting maybe a small secondary, where you can see I have a similar set of attributes. I can then pick the bays for the secondary spans and minimize this item. I can repeat the process for communication as well, where I can see that some of the attributes are a little different, like the available list of insulator types. This is again something that is established during the setup of your configuration file. I can select the same bays for this item, and I can see that my top view updates again. Now what I can also do is add a drop to this pole. This can be done by selecting Span, Drop, and selecting perhaps a Communication Drop. For the bay for this Communication Drop, I'm going to select my Drop Bay that I established earlier on in the video. And I can see that this is going off at 90 degrees. I can also add equipment to this pole, perhaps a street light, which again I can set an owner for as well as a count. I can also change the attachment angle, which I might want to change to 90 degrees. I can also change the attachment height here if I wish to. I can also add guying to this structure by using this plus guy option and selecting my type of guy wire. And I can then choose the type. In this example, I can choose a down guy. And since my street light is attached on the 90 degree side and my communication drop is also attached on the 90 degree side. I might want to back up those items with this down guy. I can do so by changing my attachment height to reflect the same attachment height as the street light and my communication drop, which I might want to verify by just double checking this attachment height. and where I can put in a value here for 18 feet above ground line, where I can also put in my lead length and also my attachment angle, which in this case can be 270 degrees. Once I've added this list of components here, and I think I've collected all the items from my pole, what I can also do is come up under this options list and do a side view of my pole. Here I can see my primary, secondary, my communications, my down guy, and also my street light. What I can also do is a top view of all the items attached to the pole. 
What I can also see on the screen is that currently I have no calculation run with the capacity being used on this poll. I can also do this from my side list here by selecting Calculate. And I can see that I'm currently using 29% of this poll's capacity. And I'm also seeing my worst wind direction is currently 270 degrees. What I can also do for this structure is add additional data under my plus OTH option, where I can add user defined data. This will allow me to put in any issues I might notice about a structure, which are listed here, such as a cracked insulator, slack or broken guy, or any of these items listed here. There's also a spot down here for additional notes if a collector needs to make any additional comments about the structure. In this example, I might put in that there's a bird's nest. What you'll also see once you've added several components is that there's a different icon or symbol listed for each structure. This is again something that is determined during the setup of the configuration file. Once I've finished adding all my components to my structure, I can also do a 3D view of the entire structure. From here I can see that I have a whole simplified rendered 3D model of the structure I've collected. I can use these directional buttons to change how I'm looking at the structure. Once the structure is complete, I can come into my list of options and I can also calculate again just to be sure nothing has changed after I've added my user defined data. I can also change my line of lead if I want to just by typing in a value here. And once I'm all done, I can come and select finished. Once I've selected finished, I will see that I'm given my ground line capacity utilization as a percentage, my worst wind angle, and whether or not guys are present on the structure. From the screen, I can collect another poll, change my project, or just exit the application. Now that I've uploaded my structure, I can access it again and finish processing it back in the OCalc Pro desktop application.